Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the Radeon HD 6850 from AMD started appearing on the market toward the end of 2010. At $179 it was considered a mid-range option, it's 1 gig of VRAM commonplace at the time. A year or so later Sapphire released this model, a card with 2 gigs of GDDR5 which certainly would have been a more tempting option for those gaming at higher resolutions. If you stumble across one of these on the used market more often than not it'll be a one gigabyte card which were far more common and still are today I bought this card years ago, according to my mum anyway, who, when helping me move house, found a receipt with it inside a plastic storage box. I would have certainly taken a look back at it beforehand if I knew I had it, probably at a time when it would still be a more capable gamer. But then I got to wondering how this mid-range card from many years ago could handle itself as we approach 2020. Could this 179 US dollar near decade old investment play out in my favour? I don't recall ever reviewing a 6850 before on the channel but maybe I have and that's why this one hasn't seen the light of day in years. But there's nothing in my video history that's 6850 related. Let's start then with the games that are off the table. Red Dead Redemption 2 threw up a whole host of errors. Battlefield 5 got to the main menu and froze every single time and Rage 2 refused to start not only on this card and Xeon CPU, but every different processor combo I tried. So, if you like any of those titles, which I'm sure 99.999% of you do, then I'm afraid you're out of luck. Gears 5 was also sort of unplayable, and by that I mean it was totally unplayable. I mean I was happy to proceed with my 8 frames per second, but the game said no. I waited a while longer, a long while longer to be honest but my patience just like my hairline was wearing pretty thin. No one on this planet would deem this an enjoyable experience so I headed to a different one instead with the Outer Worlds. The card hardly gave us an out of this world experience at 1080p and the concept of a smooth frame rate seemed pretty alien. But the fact that this title actually ran could be perceived as groundbreaking by some. A drop to 720p with the low settings still didn't give the card much breathing space, but lowering the resolution scale to 50% increased the average to infinity and beyond. Okay, I mean we're talking about 35 frames per second here, but it's a cosmic improvement over the experience at 1920 by 1080 Dirt Rally 2, my usual go-to run on absolutely anything game, performed well under pressure at 1080p. There were certainly a few minor drops, but overall the average frame rate hovered around 40. There was no need to turn down the resolution as I had a 30fps target in mind throughout, and despite the various crashes with other games, the only one crashing here was, as usual, me. That's enough of the puns now, honestly, let's move on before I blow this Mini Cooper to Kingdom Come. Oh, what a coincidence, Kingdom Come Deliverance is up next, and whilst the 6850 came close to 30fps at 1080p low settings, it couldn't quite get there. Enter 900p, my knight in shining armour. This opening level generally tends to be quite intensive on the system, so I was surprised to see the frame rate exceed 30. I'd done the usual of running around trying to get into trouble, and it wasn't long before I made a complete fool of myself and had the guards running after me. Crisis at 1080p high did surprisingly well, I mean we saw more than 30 FPS anyway. 60 frames per second was off the table, at least average wise, because there were a few frame drops but nothing too bad I suppose. I'm sure that if you bought one of these back in 2010 you'd have upgraded by now, but if you haven't then it may be worth considering at least. I like all graphics cards really, I'm not trying to slate it, but AAA games will require more horsepower these days, most of them anyway. Finally, it's Counter-Strike Global Offensive, a more CPU intensive title which as you can imagine ran fine. Some of you may be thinking that because I tested this card with a Xeon CPU, it's holding the card back. 
Don't worry, that is not the case. The GPU reaches its maximum potential long before the processor really has a chance to get going. I'm using this E5645 as I still have my Ryzen rig packed up in a box ready for the new office, and this old beast was at hand. It's still a good chip and has 6 cores and 12 threads and for £5 here in the UK or 10 US dollars it really is quite a good deal providing you have a motherboard for it which can be expensive but enough about that we're talking about the 6850 and overall well it probably isn't worth getting one anymore after spending the initial £179 on it I imagine it would have been good up till about 2016, 17 in most AAA titles but these days well it does start to struggle. So, the 6850 in 2019, probably best left on the used auction site. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know if you still have a 6850 in your system because I'd love to know how it performs and what games you play on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I will see you all in the next video.